check out the original Halitali in the description, and I hope you enjoy this video. Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 20 of the Dungeon Lore series. In this series, I hope to expand upon things you might not know about Final Fantasy XIV dungeons, as well as discuss their individual stories and lore. This episode's dungeon is the hard mode version of Halatali. A hundred years or so prior to the Calamity, Halatali was transformed from what was once a sacred place for the Lalafell ancestors that arrived in Eorzea, to a proving ground for the toughest and grittiest gladiators of the Guild of Uldar had to offer. Although the place was deserted in the wake of the Calamity, the halls remained intact and the arenas withstood the tremors. And now, thanks to the intervening of a group of adventurers, the tunnels thrive once again with the heat of battle and the tension of combat. The Warrior of Light speaks to Hugobert once more, who excitedly tells us of Halatali's restoration, and that any adventurer or gladiator worth their salt is flocking to the place with battle hunger in their eyes. He noticed that we are quite the experienced adventurer ourselves, and recommends us speak with Arl standing watch outside the entrance to the refurbished tunnels. Arl tells us of how Hugobert himself once travelled the sands as a gladiator, although these days he is easily distracted and doesn't follow the trade on the regular. He then recognises us as the original liberator of Halatali, and goes on to tell us that although the errant beast still wanders the tunnel, the brass blades have them well in hand, and offers us to challenge the gauntlet as an exciting return for those who freed the hallowed arenas. Entering the tunnels, we can see the change from the dingy and derelict appearance of the original floor into the place, with the floors and halls now clean and brightly lit, gladiators practicing on striking dummies as we approach the entrance to the gauntlet. An announcer tells us of the trials we will be facing, the first stage being a warm-up against beasts and mammoths. As we proceed, a myriad of traps attempt to stop us, with iron balls falling from the ceiling in this area. Along the way, Gladiators from all across the land stand ready to face the gauntlet, some regretting their choices and some determined to push on. Carrying on through the first area, we turn a corner and pass more beasts, and approach a gate leading into the Hall of the Krupalari. We speak with the gladiator trainer, who tells us that the fights between man and cyclops have ever drawn a crowd, and the gate opens to reveal Pirakmon, a large cyclops clad in heavy armour. During the fight, Parakmon utilises the usual abilities seen when fighting Cyclops, using its Eye of the Beholder to catch any far away, its Piercing Glower to damage any caught in the gaze, and its 100 and 1000 ton swings. The latter of these can only be mitigated by using the Mammoth Activator located in the arena, which causes the Mammoth roaming the arena to spawn a magical bubble that reduces damage when stood in. Upon defeat, the gate on the side of the arena opens, and the party proceeds up the ramp to speak with the elite gladiator trainer, who praises our skills and sends us to the start of the second stage of the gauntlet. The first room of this stage is a large room with four caged curls, after which the gate opens and the party proceeds to the room once containing the fire spirit known as Firemane. The remaining beasts here are all enormous bears, along with a basilisk that roams the corridors. After these beasts are felled, the gate towards the rear of the room opens, and after a handful more beasts, the next gladiator trainer warns us of the Cataplipas, whose gaze is feared across the land for its deadly properties. During the fight, the Cataplipas uses various powers from its eye to wreak havoc on the party. With the blue eye, the beast uses its cold stare, a dangerous ability that paralyzes any caught in the gaze. When the eye is yellow, it will use its demon eye ability, turning all party members to stone. This can be avoided by utilising the shadowy orbs located around the arena. While these orbs will blind party members, being unable to see the gaze of the beast allows them to avoid its spell. Finally, the red eye of the beast is activated. The Cataplipas will use its bestial roar, constantly damaging the party. Here, the boss's eye becomes tainted, and the party must damage the eye enough to revert the beast to its blue eye stage, preventing it from causing too much destruction. Upon defeat, 
we can once more speak with the elite trainer, who whisks us to the third and final stage of the Halatali Gauntlet. In this final trial, we must cross swords with the fiercest gladiators the guild has to offer. We first fight the champion Lancer along with his beasts, followed by a pair consisting of a gladiator and a conjurer. Unsurprisingly, the conjurer will attempt to heal the gladiator and themselves when injured, and so should be dealt with first. The last set of combatants are a duo of archers and a champion marauder. The archers pelt the party with arrows, while the marauder will use his home gag ability while injured, refusing to die and chaining a party member to the spot. Finally, we speak with Bronze Bull outside the Hall of the Secutors, who tells us to prepare for a fight with a true elite. A full band of fighters emerges from the opposite gate, along with a look at a large beast kept within. The leader, Muepo the Beholden, takes a step back for the first bout and allows his comrades to take the helm. During the fight, we must deal with the gladiators as best we can. Silent Moss the Solemn, the conjurer of the group, will heal her fellows as well as casting magics upon the party. Franz the Fair, while a stalwart gladiator, does not pose much of a threat as he cannot damage the party greatly. Ulimbo the Sand Devil is the archer of the group, and she can cause great damage to party members, which cannot be controlled by the party's tank. While in contrast, Langloisa the Lionhearted does high damage which can be controlled. Taking down Silent Moss first to prevent her healing, the party manages to defeat this band of gladiators. Upon defeat, Muwepo and his beast, Narasimha, emerge from the gate and charge at the party, Muwepo claiming to be the mightiest thaumaturge of the land. In this part of the fight, Mumuepu casts magics upon the party, while Narasimha swipes and claws. When injured, Mumuepu begins channeling a spell known as Absolute Bind, which magically chains two party members to the scepter Mumuepu places in the arena. These party members must be freed, in order to prevent incapacitation from the following spell, Thal's Fury. After casting the bind a few times, along with the fireballs spouted from Narasimha, the pair fall and are defeated. And that's the end of the story and lore of the hard mode version of Halatali. A second journey through a gauntlet now reclaimed by the guild, and the Warrior of Light crowned the true champion of the Hallowed Halls used for training the mightiest of swords. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Final Fantasy XIV lore, and I'll see you next time for the hard mode version of Brave Fox's Longstop.